Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to replace our rear main seal. In this video, all we're going to do is work on the seal area. This is just a junk engine out here in the junk pile I'm going to do it on uh, for demonstration purposes. We'll make another video for how to remove and reinstall transmissions and that kind of thing uh, at another time. But right now what we're going to concentrate on is the rear main seal. I've, this engine has the, has the big round back plate off of. You don't have to take that off when you, when you work on the seal. The only thing that's necessary is you have to get the transmission out, the flywheel, the flex plate, etc. out of the way. So you can access these six bolts here and there's a couple more down here in the bottom. All right, starting off with, the problem with these uh, seals, they're not centered properly. The, the, these housings are not centered properly. So we're gonna, we're gonna correct our, our centering problem first. So we're gonna go ahead and take out these bolts. <coughs> There's also four oil pan bolts down here. I'm going to use I'm going to use my handy dandy Florida pneumatic air ratchet. But you can use a hand ratchet, hand wrench, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever's most convenient for you. Now we're going to knock the seal housing off. We're going to be gentle with it because we don't want to bend it because they're, they're kind of they're kind of cheesy. They're not real not, not real stiff when it comes to beating on them. That's an old wood chisel. Actually, it was a new wood chisel. They make for great uh, scrapers. I know some of you woodworking guys out there probably have heartburn, but and I'm going to gently pry it away like so. There's a gasket back here. You can either reuse you can either reuse the gasket. You can buy a new gasket or you can put it back with blue silicone. This one, I'm speaking of this gasket right here. Assuming you're not rebuilding the engine, leave this pan gasket. It's it's torn a little bit coming off. but it's relatively intact if you can see that there. So you want to just leave that gasket alone. It's part of the oil pan gasket actually. Um, it's already been compressed so you're better off just leaving that alone. When we put it back together we're going to use blue silicone or something like that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to wipe off our crankshaft and we're going to see how bad the damage is. And I see a few pits out here in the outer edges, but basically back here where the seal rubs looks like it's in pretty good shape. So we really don't have much to worry about there. You want to make sure there's no, no burrs or anything on it. You also want to make sure that no one's taken a screw. People like to take a screw and run a screw into the seal and pull it out. Well, that's all fine and well as long as you don't run the screw into the side of the crank. Because if you scratch the side of that crankshaft, it's over. It's going to leak forevermore. You're going to have to take the crankshaft out and have it reground. So be very careful not to do that. I see a couple pieces of goo there. We're going to get some crocus cloth and clean that thing up actually before we go on. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take and knock that gasket off. It's a nice idea to stick a rag in there, kind of like that. And you start to hacking because you really don't need that gasket material down into your down into your oil pan as a tendency to clog up uh, oil pickup screens. And that looks like it's pretty clean there. 
this rust that you see on here your engine probably won't have that because it hasn't been sitting out in the rain but if it does have if you live up there in the rust belt it very well may have corrosion here take a take a uh, take a razor blade and then take a razor blade scrape it and then maybe some fine sandpaper and clean it up because when that adapter plate goes on any imperfections that are in that will cause that adapter plate to get cocked this way or this way bear in mind you do not have to take that adapter plate off in order to do the job we're doing here today it's just difficult to, to film things underneath underneath the vehicle so we're going to do it right here all right now we've got that cleaned off here's our seal housing we're going to clean that off too but we're not going to we're not going to get medieval on it because this is aluminum and aluminum gouges up pretty easily we'll come back to that anyway here we are i'm going to i'm going to knock the seal back out of the bore And if it hits the bottom, just get your oh piece of piece of board or something like that. Yeah, I got a chunk of metal laying over here. I might just go ahead and use that. There you go. Now this was one of the this is one of the later seals. This one has a little bit of a rubber coating on it. A lot of these seals had problems migrating forward. If you have one of the seals that is steel on the outside, no signs of any rubber, those seals would migrate out. And as they migrated forward, the alignment tits from the flex plate on an automatic transmission would cut the face of it off and then the whole seal would fall apart. Um, don't be surprised if when you take your, your seal out, if it's the original seal that you just can't take your hands and just pull it out because that's, that's what a lot of them did. All right, I took a, a red or a maroon scotch brake pad and I just kind of cleaned this all up. You want to be very careful on the face of this crankshaft because if you mess this up, if you even knock a thousandth of an inch off in the wrong place on this, your flywheel will do this when it's up here, which will make your clutch chatter. Anyway, here we got some Berryman B1 Chem Tool carburetor cleaner. I love this stuff. Not very many carburetor cleaners uh, on the market anymore are any good. But anyway, what we're going to do with this is we're just going to clean any garbage on there, any oil off of there for the moment. And I'm going to spray a little on the bore. Sometimes you'll have some of that like red paint on there. It doesn't make that big a deal, but just rub it and get it off. All right, I've been wiping off my thing here with my B12 Chem Tool carburetor cleaner. And I got the bore all nice and clean. And we still got a little piece of gasket on the back of it there. All right, I got the rest of the gasket off. Sealed bore's nice and clean. We got all this clean. A little bit of carburetor cleaner on our old gasket there. We're gonna silicone that thing back, so we want the silicone to stick. Okay, there we are. Thermotex Black silicone. I buy it in the caulking tubes because I normally use it. You can get it in blue, black, and all these other colors in little, you know, roll-up tubes at your auto parts store. The one thing you not need to know about silicone is, is that this silicone has a very poor shelf life. I've seen it before where it sat around too long, and then. It, it squirts out and you think everything is fine, only to find out that it never dries and wherever you used it, you start blowing oil out. 
So when you do this job, I recommend you go get a new tube of silicone. A lot of the guys make the mistake of when they're siliconing this bottom piece in of not uh, using new silicone and then they start leaking like crazy it's because the silicone didn't set. In any event, what we're going to do is we're going to put a put a bead of silicone across here. I'm not going to put a lot on here because this engine is obviously going to be torn down and overhauled. This is just for demonstration purposes. But you put a good bead of silicone right across here. And then you take your gasket. I usually will put a little silicone on that, like that, and then I'll usually just go along and I'll just rub it on, kind of just kind of rub it in. Some guys like to use high tack, some guys like to use nothing. I find that the silicone particularly makes it easier to take apart when you go to work on it again. And as you saw me struggling with those that gasket, scraping that old gasket off. I mean, it's not exactly what I call fun. What we're going to do now, if we're going to install the seal cover, the reason why we're doing it without the seal is because there's no alignment pins anywhere on this. It just kind of says, well, wherever the bolt holes are is wherever it's going to land. Not my idea of a good plan. Some of these things I've seen as much as 90 thousands off. So I'm going to stick my gasket on here like so. Make sure the holes kind of line up. Thin there, put a little right there. Okay, now I'm going to stick it on the engine here. I'm going to grab my small bolts. I'm going to stick them in there, just finger now tight. we got all our bolts in and they're almost down to finger tight. We'll maybe thread a couple, a little bit more in there. Okay, that's good enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to line up the seal housing. Now you can do this with round wooden pegs that you've turned down in your wood lathe, or you can use little pieces of square block. I've used some pieces of plastic, I just turned them on the lathe and I turned them to uh, 0.393. That's a genuine Harbor Freight uh, dial caliber. You don't, this is a 12 inch one, uh, 6 inch one's you know, fine for most people. You can get them over there for about $15 on the average. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these pegs in at three and nine three and nine and six and twelve and you have to pay attention to tolerance on these I tell you to go buy one of those calipers for a reason believe it or not oh, there we go All right, now that I've lined up my seal housing with the four pegs, I've got an inch pounds torque wrench here. I guess this isn't real critical, but if you're not used to working with tools, it's a good idea on diesel engines to use torque wrenches because if you don't have the fasteners tightened to the right torque, the diesel engines vibrate so much, they'll, they'll vibrate a lot of the fasteners out. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm torquing these down to about oh, 95 to 100 inch pounds. And that's usually a pretty good safe limit. Okay, we've gotten that taken care of now. Now the other way that you can line your crankshaft up 
with your seal housing is to get one of my handy dandy tools. I machined that out of a big chunk of steel. And in that case, which is really easy, you just put this thing on like that, then tighten down all your bolts and you're done. You don't have to mess with the pegs. Um, I'll make these available to anyone who needs them upon request. In any event, next we're going to install the seal. Okay, now it's time to put in one of my custom seals. And I got a little bit of grease here. You can use oil. I usually use grease. This is transmission lubricant for assembly transmissions that I'm using. It doesn't really matter much. Put a little bit back in here, put it on the lip. Because what we want this thing to do is we want it to glide in. We don't want to be fighting it the whole way. Now I'm cleaning off my hands. All right. As I said, this is a tool that I made as a centering tool just to center the housing. Now you could use this tool to put the seal in. I cut this to the correct depth. However, I also designed another tool, and as you can see, this first step hits the housing. This step right here, which measures, which me measures 266 thousandths deep. That's how deep I determined I wanted to push the seal in there. Now, for some reason, you had my tool, and your crankshaft had a big nasty groove in it, or a big nasty scratch in it. The crankshaft surface right here is actually pretty deep, and so is the seal housing. So you can, just moving the seal deeper in an eighth of an inch makes, makes a difference. So if you have a big gouge or something and you want to miss it, all you have to do with my tool there is just take a piece of, a piece of stiff cardboard and make you a couple of rings that go there, so those rings will space it down further. You also notice that I drilled two holes in here. The reason why is because when this, this tight fits so tight over the crankshaft that it actually creates a vacuum, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to put on and take off. Um, this is where the seal goes. So this is where the seal goes. The, this slides over the crankshaft. And this ridge right here pushes it down, and then this one, last one, you know, stops it on the case. So we're going to take my universal, my, we're going to take my universal tool here, a universal bushing driver, put it on here. I made the hole three quarter inch to fit my particular driver. If there was one that you particularly had and liked, I would go ahead and. You tell me about it, I just make it the size hole that you want it. So you can use yours. Anyway, here we're going to push the seal down over top of it. We got the seal all nice and greased up. Now we're going to fit that thing over the crankshaft just like that. And now we're just going to gently tap that thing down in until the tool seats. You want to watch it, make sure you're going down evenly. Hear how the noise changed when you got to the bottom? Voila! Seal is in. Now you have to gently jerk your tool back out. You hear it sucking air through those holes. And there you have it. Seal is installed. Life is good. Now, if you want to use, if you don't want that expensive tool that I got to custom make, you can also take this, this steel alignment tool that I made, and technically you could lay that over top of it. Then you just take a plastic or a rawhide mallet, and then you can tap it in all the way around. That, that'll work also. 